Right now, you're seeing more of a almost a wholesale sell-off in almost all commodities. And gold and silver are a commodity. They may be a hard asset commodity, but they are a commodity. And you know, if you look at the board today, almost everything's red. Why? Because everything's selling off right now. People are trying to raise cash, take profits, whatever. You mentioned precious metals as a way to protect yourself against inflation. Right now, we're actually seeing a downturn in both gold and silver, along with the stock market sell-off. So what is your perspective on that? Could we have further to fall if the stock market continues to crash? I think right now, look, we're, we're, personally, I'll give you a full disclosure. I always own physical metals, but on the board or in paper, I'm short paper, gold and paper, silver. OK, for now, I've been short for a little while. Uh, I think that's going a little bit lower. But again, that doesn't you know, that has nothing to do with my opinion of long term gold. I, I, you know, I'm not talking about next week or two weeks. OK, right now you're seeing more of a almost a wholesale sell off in almost all commodities and gold and silver are a commodity. They may be a hard asset commodity, but they are a commodity. And, you know, if you look at the board today, almost everything's red. Why? Because everything's selling off right now. People are trying to raise cash, take profits, whatever. I mean, I think gold will make new highs this year at some point. Uh, it's just for now, I'm short and the trend is down. And I'm going to always play with the overall trend. And the trend today is lower. And what are some targets you have um, and significant support levels for gold and silver at the moment? 1800 and gold is huge. Um, you know, I think we'll probably see that though. There's an outside chance we go to 17 or 1600. I think 1670 is probably the keyest level. If we happen to get that big of a sell, I don't think it'll get that far. Uh, and I think you're looking at, you know, 21 and silver is huge. Uh, and you know, listen, we could go anywhere. And certainly, I don't, I don't make predictions like that. I just give you great levels. What I think is where we're going to go to, and where we'll hold. And right now. I'm, I'm watching 1800 very closely, but I'm also taking a peek at you know 1850 because we did hold there the other day after after coming off a little bit off that big rally. Now a lot of people look at the dollar index when it comes to kind of analyzing precious metals to see what the dollar no, is doing. No, 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 no. You, you have to forget about the indexes. The, the currencies are, are garbage. Okay, they are seriously they're fraudulent. They are manipulated by the central banking systems around the globe. They take turns devaluing their own currency so that they give you the excuse in the United States, well, it makes it better for export. Well, if I'm losing value on my currency, what difference does it make what I export it for? You know, the big thing is that the demand model and the dollar is only up because right now with a little bit of fear in the world, the dollar is the true fear asset still because people are going to run to U.S. dollars because we're still the reserve currency. So I think that when those who try to correlate high dollars with with uh, commodities typically get raked over the coals because that correlation will work, but it doesn't work immediately, right? So if the dollar maintains its strength and the market and everything turns around, then maybe it'll become an issue. But it, right now, I don't see anything turning around too quickly. And I do see inflation spiraling out of control, the opportunity or the problematic point of stagflation in this country which again is not a good situation so for today maybe the correlation is working but it's not something if you keep trying to correlate like the assets you know they don't necessarily do them in, in the same time period they do them over a lo much longer period of time and i think it's a mistake especially when you look at you know soft commodities their prevention their, their dollar denominated as well and they're going up when they, as a rule they're all in big uptrends why because there's going to be a food shortage next year. So when you have supplies, people will pay anything to get it. And that's what we're talking about. Definitely. And I think it is key when it comes to uh, the dollar index that it's it's just the dollar's value compared to other currencies. If they're all falling, then it's not going to mean a whole lot with respect to um, the dollar compared to other assets. I mean, we are at a 20 year high in the dollar index. It hit recently a 20 year high. But again, that's just measuring how strong it is compared to other currencies. Yeah, but I'll ask you this question. How much more can you buy with that 20% bonus in the dollar? Well, 8.5% less than last year. And you know. Right. So again, the, the, when they went to fiat currency system and they took out the gold standard, that was the license for the central banking systems around the world to steal money so they could flood a system and do things that are not even part of their mandate, okay, going forward. So this is a crack. It's, it is what it is. There's nothing I can do about it. But this is why you have to be 
in assets that can appreciate, and you have to have some protection on the side because basically these they're 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 targeting. If everybody had their way out there, not us, but those who you know run governments, they'd like to be have globalization and a global coin, global dollars for everybody. So this is part of their their long term scheme, in my opinion. What are some of the key things you're going to be looking at in the days and weeks ahead as we see this volatile market out there? Um, what are you looking at right now? Well, I mean, I'm watching volume because volume will be an indicator of when I think the much bigger selling will start to come in. But, you know, you want, keep an eye on oil and it, it keeps going up. Obviously, the higher oil goes, the more trouble this country is going to be in. You know, the numbers they report are ridiculous. Same as the the jobs number that came out this morning, 428 was garbage because, again, they use a backwards number. They're using the U3 versus the U6, which doesn't tell you how many people have quit working for, quit looking for jobs. So the numbers are always artificial. I think businesses are folding up. I think you see an administration that doesn't care and is really driving the small business out intentionally and so I think I'm watching, you know, certain stocks to see how they react. And again, I'm going to play the trend, uh, as I always do, on a, on a trading basis. And I'm going to trade. I'm going to always be a buyer that is going to be hedged on a longer term basis. But I think the things you want to watch is the volatility index, which continues to rise. Now, that's not the fear gauge. That's just the number of options being bought to open versus sold to open. And I think that that's an indication that we're going to see some more rips in here. I think the housing market's going to break down. That's going to be another problem. And I will. I think there's going to be a lot of defaults. Keep an eye on the banks because, as you know, once again they have let the banks run free. Okay, and they took off a lot of the restrictions. So I think this time they're over more over leveraged than they were in 2008. And and I hope this time they let them go bust. Okay, because there's not not every bank is going to be broke. And that was the same last time. If you can't make it, why should the people bail you out? Let the but depositors get bailed out by the federal government and let the bad banks, the bad business people go out of business.